Each of us is like a mirror that's looking for itself in the mirror. This is the paradox. The mirror itself can never find itself as an object in the mirror. This whole world, this universe, is what is contained in the mirror. But the mirror is the self that is beyond. And so the difference between the exoteric paths that we study here and the esoteric paths are that the exoteric or the, the popular paths We could call them false paths. Start with the false assumption that you are someone in the mirror who needs to get out. And so the religion will promise you liberation from the wheel of birth and death or going to heaven or whatever it is that you as an ego entity is looking for. But the truth is, although that may indeed be something that draws you into the esoteric level. That the you that you believe is looking for that is already liberated because that you does not actually exist. And so there's no need to be saved from a situation that you're not really in. And it's only the false identification with the body and with the stream of consciousness of the mind that causes the illusion, the ignorance, that there is an I that is trapped in some state of bondage. So we do speak here of the supreme liberation, but what it is is liberation from the idea that you need to be liberated. Once it is realized that there is no ego self, that that is pure illusion, the liberation is instantaneous. But consciousness becomes congealed, reified around certain objects in the mirror that it likes very much. And then it becomes, through that process of identification, trapped in the mirror of its own projections. And so the act of meditation is to come out of the illusion that we're in the mirror and to realize that we are the mirror. The false identity that doesn't really exist is very nervous because it knows it doesn't exist and it doesn't want to have to discover that fact. And so it creates many defense mechanisms to keep itself in ignorance. In the Eastern religions, they tend to use that concept of avidya, or ignorance, whereas in the West, the concept is that of sin. And while the two actually refer to the same phenomenon, sin is a little more inaccurate because sin implies that there is indeed a sinner and that that sinner must be reproved and castigated, a little like we talked about in the class last night, and purified of its illusion, whereas the real purification is simply the elimination of the false idea that there is a sinner. And then there is freedom from ignorance. The ignorance is the belief that you are some entity separated from the entirety of the real. And so in that realization, one becomes a jnani. This is a jnana yoga. 
But jnani mustn't be understood as a knower. Jnana means knowledge. But jnani is actually knowing. It is knowing without a knower. That is what is known, in fact, is the realization that there is no one who is doing the knowing. There is only the knowing itself. And the knowing is being. And when we know that we do not exist except as the knowing of the entirety of all that is and the source of all that is, then the supreme beingness manifests. as the real of what is known. And in that, all the dualities, all the oppositions, all of the conflicts are resolved in unity. A unity beyond the opposites of being or not being, real or false, self and other, subject, object, all of those collapse into the silence of the essence of the Supreme Real. And this is what we're doing when we meditate. And it's simple because all it requires is letting go of the mind that wants to maintain the illusion of existence. And retrieve that projected representation of the self and bring the energy of the consciousness that was trapped in the representation and in language, which is simply a tissue of representations, back into the silence of pure awareness. And the subjective imperience will be that of wakeful, self-existent cognizance, pure awareness without content an emptiness. But the emptiness is not an emptiness that is other than fullness. The emptiness itself is the all. It is the point of the meeting of nothing and everything. And this point of meeting is also the point of meeting of light and awareness because all that is reduces to forms of light. And forms of light appear in awareness. And when the two become one, then what had been trapped in form becomes realized as the formless. And what had been limited in time and space is realized as eternal and infinite. This is the liberation. And this realization is available here and now. It is simply the truth of your consciousness when consciousness lets go of all identifications. This is Sayoko.